Good evening and welcome to Spencerville High School for tonight's matchup between the St. Henry Redskins and the Spencerville Bearcats. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen. And Dave, feels like it's been a long time since we've been in the gym, but here we are opening weekend of the 2022-2023 season and we're kicking it off with a great matchup tonight. You're right, Nate. It's great to be your wingman tonight. St. Henry, Spencerville. We just celebrated Thanksgiving, but it's opening night, as you said, in boys basketball. It's like Christmas morning. You're walking out to the living room. You see the presents under the tree. By the shape and size, you might know what a couple of them are, but until you unwrap it, you don't know what you got. That's what both of these coaches are looking forward to this evening. And the opening tip is going to be controlled by the St. Henry Redskins. We will take a look at St. Henry's starting lineup. Number four, Caden Bergman. Number five, Evan Bowers, as the first shot goes up and then is missed. Spencerville controls the rebound. Number 11, Logan Link. Number 24, Luke Beike. And number 33, John Hardings, as Spencerville comes em empty with their first possession of the night as well. Both teams pushing it up the floor right away. Quick shots early in the possession both ways. Both teams come up empty early. Take a look at the starting five for the Bearcats. Number three, Josh Henline. Number five, Evan Osting. Number 11, Dylan Smith. Number 23, Carter Sutoff. And number 35, Dylan Cooks. As we have our first basket of the evening. That was Evan Bowers able to get the basket to go as St. Henry's on top, 2-0 here in the early going. St. Henry's going to look for production from Bowers. He's the returning leading scorer from a team that was decimated by graduation. Averaged 5.4 points per game last year for the Redskins, did Bowers. High expectations out of this Bearcat team. But so far here in the early going, not able to get a basket up as St. Henry comes up with a turnover. Yeah, good defense by St. Henry. They're in the zone in the half court. And Spencerville is opening up in man-to-man. -man. Three point shot is up. That one's going to be off. Rebound comes down to the Redskins. They'll scramble for the loose ball. Tried to make the pass was Bowers, but had that one taken away. Here's Henline, gives it right back. As Osting not able to handle the return pass, but we're going to have our first whistle, and that's going to be a foul. And that's going to go on Evan Bowers, his first team first. And with that first whistle, let's introduce our officiating crew, Scott Mock, Bruce Etzler, and Aaron Braun blowing the whistle this evening. So Josh Henline, the senior, takes it out of bounds, gets it up high. Ends up back with the basketball, moving around towards midcourt. Yeah, Henline, the leader out here for the Bearcats, brings a lot of experience to the floor. There's Osting for three. This one's good. Evan Osting, good on the three-point try to put Spencerville on top by one. Yeah, Osting on the board. He averaged 4.4 points a game last year, 39% from the floor. Beautiful shot from behind the arc. One to three on its way. This one rolls around and drops for Luke Bikey. Nice answer by the Redskins. Yeah, Bikey averaged 2.4 last year. Again, he, two of the three returning players with varsity action, gets on the board. As you see, Dylan Smith wastes no time that time. As you see a very fast pace, up and down game so far. Spencerville wasted no time, comes back, gets the layup. We are all tied at five. Three-point shot, no good by Bowers. Comes down to the red, or excuse me, the Bearcats. Headline's going to run. Goes all the way to the basket. Can't get it to go, but picks up the contact. Looks like that's going to be on Luke Bikey. That's going to be his first, team second. Yeah, again, fast and furious action. Transition basketball both ways. Spencerville, they're excited to play that way. They bring a lot of experience back to the team this year, starting three seniors and two juniors. And then uh, St. Henry. They want this to be a junkyard dog kind of game. They're really feeling out who they are, having lost seven seniors from last year's squad. And they're going to play that zone pressure back to zone, try to keep things up tempo that way. But right now, Henline gets himself to the free throw line where he goes one for two. A couple of substitutions. Number 45, Blake Summers, checks in the game for the Bearcats, as did number 22, Nicholas Berkey, for the Redskins. Five minutes left to go here in the opening quarter. Spencerville on top, 6-5. Delzyth also has checked into the game, so him with the basketball up at the top of the key. They work it down low. 
one's going to be off as Vikey not able to connect, but tracks down his own rebound. Yeah, good half-court man defense by the Bearcats. They just give up the offensive rebound there. It extends the possession for St. Henry. Extra pass over into the corner to the free throw line was Link. Ends up passing it up, wants it back. He's going to let the three-pointer go. Link's three-pointer, no good. Sutoff comes up with the rebound. Here comes Dylan Smith. Smith with the left hand off the glass for two. Pretty kiss off the window with the left hand on the right side there, Nate. Smith, a returning letterman for Spencerville. A lot of experience in his back pocket. Shows it there. Here's Bowers. He gets rid of it. The Redskins got to be careful in those passing lanes. Henline almost able to jump that one. Just missed it. Redskins lucky to keep the possession. And because of that, Evan Bowers was able to connect on that corner three-pointer. Coach Rosenbeck's got to be pleased with Bowers getting them off on the, to a good start offensively. Bowers with eight points, excuse me, five points here on the night is the Redskins and Spencerville all tied at eight. Bowers with the rebound. He was 10th in the MAC last year in rebounds, averaging 4.6 per game. And we're going to have another whistle. This one's going to be on Blake Summers, so that is going to be his first, Spencerville's first team foul of the night. And a couple more substitutions coming into the game as we see number 13. Not to, oh, looking at the wrong side of my scoreboard. Owen Sensible, number 13, checking into the game for Spencerville, as did number 24, Carter Orr. Sensiball, diaper dandy, he's a freshman, the coach's son, Kevin Sensiball's son, getting his first taste of varsity action. There's Hayden Beckman, he just checked into the game during the last stoppage as well. So both of these teams going to the bench often here in the first quarter, and with the pace that they're playing, it's not surprising at all. Dylan Smith trying to run out. It's going to be met by Beckman, who's going to pick up the foul. And I know we've mentioned that St. Henry has a lot of turnover with their lineup. It's a transition year here at the beginning of the season for St. Henry. But we're talking about the St. Henry Redskins here. These kids know how to win. They know how to compete. They're not awed by this at all. These kids are saying, hey, it's my turn to put on the red jersey, and I'm going to take advantage of it. And Coach Rosenbeck, he will go deep into his bench. Smith kicks it back out, in line with the extra pass into the corner. Sensiball's three is good. Oh, and Sensiball with the three from the corner. Watched him do that in junior high. He's going to be uh, a force to be reckoned with during his high school career. He's lived in the gym. Shot pulled up from the free throw line. Curtis Puttoff able to put that one in. So a nice answer by St. Henry to keep this game within one. Going to have another turnover, though. Good defense by the Redskins. Three-point shot on its way. This one's off. Bowers comes up with the rebound. Going to keep it himself. Turnaround jumper is good. Nice patience there on the block by Bowers. Gets the offensive rebound stick back. And Spencerville throws it away. Coach Rosenbeck applauding his charges on on the sideline. Evan Osten coming back into the game, as does number 33, John Harding. And number 24, Luke Bikey. Continue to see a pretty good clip at substitutions as these teams continue to play a high offensive output. 12-11, St. Henry on top. 2.15 left to go here in the opening quarter. Hardings working up top, goes around with the left hand. It's back into the corner, drives baseline. Gets cut off, has to get rid of it. It's gonna end up out of bounds. Last touch by Spencer. More substitutions coming in. St. Henry going two at a time at this point as we see Link check back in. Oops. Uh, yes, Logan Link came back in, as did Caden Bergman. Nice inbounds play that time. Luke Bikey not able to get that one to drop. Going to go out of bounds. Last touch by St. Henry. So, yeah, Coach Rosenbeck rotating players in. His philosophy here is that we're going to run you up and down the floor. They're showing 2-2-1 two, two, zone pressure here. And even in their half-court zone, Nate, there's a lot of pressure on the ball. They're not sitting back in that zone. They're being very aggressive. Carter Sutoff checked back into the game for the Bearcats. You see that St. Henry defense making it difficult for the Bearcats to bring it up the floor, but they do cross midcourt. Three-point shot on its way. This one's going to be off. Link comes up with the rebound, and we're going to have a whistle. 
They're going to get number 13, Owen Sensible, his first. Just the team's second here in the quarter. It's been a little refreshing again. D4 basketball, a lot of times possessions are limited. We're going to have as many possessions in the first quarter that sometimes you see in the whole half. And they're not turning the ball over. Both teams are getting quality looks. Good defensive rebounding. Makes you wonder, though, Dave, we are running down here to the end of the first quarter, game one of the season. You know, we know that conditioning can be a real thing. It'll be interesting to see how these teams handle that if they keep this pace up for the rest of these three quarters. And you give the advantage to St. Henry with that right now because they do go deeper into their bench. Nice spin move up and in. Luke Mikey comes up with a nice two-point shot. Yeah, the 6'4 junior forward. Nice spin move in the paint. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Under a minute left to play here in the opening quarter. St. Henry up three. Here comes Henline. He's going to go all the way in, kicks it back out. Little indecision there by Henline causes the turnover. Carter Roar not able to handle the pass, goes back to St. Henry. Nice job by Sutoff. The junior got up high that time to knock that one out of bounds. I know Coach Sensible is going to be very pleased with the penetration against the zone, but get in there and be solid, go off at two feet. I think he'd like Josh to be looking to shoot there. He got to the NWC in the paint, looked to kick it out. I think he could have went up, and uh, Coach Sensible takes Josh out, gives him a little breather here at the end of the first quarter. Dylan Smith checked in the game for Henline. Last 38 seconds here of the opening quarter. Link takes the inbound pass, gets rid of it. Evan Bowers ends up with it. Link down low. Nice change of direction and body control that time by Bikey. Not able to get it to go down, but at the end of that, all that action down there, we have another whistle. Evan Bowers with another rebound, another offensive rebound. I believe that's at least three this first quarter. Four for Bowers, as a matter of fact. And uh, he plays much bigger than his 6'2 frame. Here's Bowers, spins to his left, gets pretty. this one up and in. Oh, pretty little look and hook down there on the left block. Nice finish. Evan Bowers with nine points in the quarter. And here's another turnover. Bowers works around to the left, top of the key, tries to go between the legs, but has it poked away. Loose ball, somehow Bowers is able to keep that for a while, but Sensiball kept it. He's gonna try to launch it, and that is gonna bring the first quarter to a close. Fast-paced action here at Spencerville High School. As after one, St. Henry's on top, 16 to 11. We'll step aside and be back on the USN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is provided by Charles River and Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Second quarter just about underway. First quarter, lots of fast back and forth action. We saw a lot of substitutions. But in the end, I think a little bit of a surprise as St. Henry has the five-point lead. Yeah, they've pushed Spencerville into five first quarter turnovers, and that's been the reason that they extended this lead with a great three-point shot right there by Dylan Smith. Dylan Smith opens up the scoring here in the second quarter with a nice three-point shot to bring us back to a two-point game. Berkey trying to get rid of it. There's a link down in the corner to Bowers. Bowers feeds Berkey down low. Berkey with the man on his back, up and in for two. Nice strong move by Chris Berkey. Yeah, great strength. He really posted well there on the block before he received the basketball. Fumbled it a little bit, recovered and finished. Nice play. Sensible for three. This one's good. Owen Sensible, his second three-pointer of the night. You can't let him open like that, but that's what zone pressure uh, allows at times. Sensible takes advantage of the clean look, drills the three. Back-to-back -back three pointers by the Bearcats here in the second quarter makes this a one-point game. Another three-point shot on its way, and it's good. The scoring back and forth between these teams. You wouldn't know this is opening night. That's where I was just going to go, Nate. This is game one. Both of these teams look like mid-season form. Shot goes up, no good by Osting. Rebound down to the Redskins. Going to push it up to Harding. Excuse me, that's Bikey. Bikey with the right hand floater for two. There was even good defense on that one in transition. He goes up over the Spencerville defender and finishes. Here's Sensible. 
Freshman having a good first varsity action as you see five Redskins at the table waiting to check in for St. Henry, and that's got to be one heck of a luxury for Coach Rosenberg. Sutoff with the feed on the inside, able to get that one in for two. Great high-low action there. Gets the pass from Blake Summers to set off. Way to find the holes in the zone if you're a Spencerville Bearcat fan. 23-19, St. Henry on top. Here's Berkey going to the baseline. Working against Sutoff, loses it. He's going to go back to the Spencerville Bearcats as now we have multiple substitutions coming back in. A whole new five for St. Henry and then Josh Henline coming in for the Bearcats. Both of these teams in their scrimmages talked about things they did well, things they need to improve upon at that point in the season as we see a turnover to a turnover there. But uh, St. Henry, just Coach Rosenbeck talked about, if we bring energy, we can be pretty good. They're bringing it tonight with Dylan Smith. Does a nice job right there. Dylan Smith goes quick with a nice job going strong to the inside. Got that two-pointer up. Back to a two-point game. Almost picked off. As you saw Evan Osting read that pass beautifully and almost had an easy basket going the other way. But it's up out of bounds going to stay with St. Henry. Yeah, you want to snap the ball, you want to reverse the ball and keep the defense at bay. But Spencerville, Coach Spencerville, man-to-man half-court defense has been a staple of his program throughout his career. They're going to deflect that ball that goes across the face of the basket if you're not moving. And in that situation, they got the deflection, didn't come up with the steal. But a deflection, St. Henry maintains possession. Here's Harding with the right hand, tried to get it off the glass. Good defense by Carter Sutoff. This one goes out of bounds and go back to the Bearcats. And Smithsville drops right back into their 2 2 1, three quarter court pressure. And able to force a couple of turnovers off of this defense. But Spencerville able to break the press, gets it to Sutoff. Sutoff tries to get in the air and touch it off the glass, but that one's a little bit short. Broke the press with ease, just came up empty right there, but fight that pressure with pressure. Speed came inside to Hardings, but immediately two Bearcats were right on him. Carter Sutoff, and then you saw number 35, Dylan Cooks, come around and try to tie that one up. Fortunately, he got a little bit too much of the arm that time, so he's going to get whistled with the foul. Yeah, just to expand on that concept, fighting pressure with pressure. I love it when teams who are pressed look to score off of it instead of breaking the press and then pulling it back out. Uh, Spencerville's been able to do that effectively. That's the way St. Henry's going to play. They're going to bring that pressure and just continue to work and get better at it every possession, every quarter, every game. Dylan Cook's a little bit aggressive down there, trying to fight for position. He's whistled for his second consecutive foul. He's going to have to take a seat. That was the 15th foul for the Bearcats. Yeah, Dylan Cook, he's a glue guy, does the dirty work for the Bearcats. Just a little too dirty there, picking up two fouls here in the early going. Mikey moves it around into the hands of Beckman. Now over to Hardy. Hardy looking to go inside. And trying to find Vikey down there. Good defenses. And you saw uh, number 45, Blake Summers, fighting for that position, getting his hands in there. And knocking this one. No, excuse me. Actually whistled him for his foul. So he picks up his second. Team sixth here. 413 left to go. And the foul starting to rack up for Spencerville. They are a little bit of well-earned foul, if you will. A Spencerville post player really got into his positioning there. Summers tried to get a hand on the ball, and he did, but a little bit of body coming around the top. A little bit of trouble getting that inbounds in. But St. Henry just did beat the five-second call. And now we're going to have a whistle going the other way. I believe this one's going to go on Bikey, and it is. That's his second. So we got multiple uh, players with two fouls here in this half. Mikey, the only one for St. Henry. And for Spencerville, you have Blake Summers and Dylan Cooks. Another luxury when you go real deep into your bench, having a, a player with two fouls doesn't really affect you that much. Great hesitation by Dylan Smith that time. Pulls it down, goes baseline, can't get it to fall, but picks up the contact, so he'll go to the free throw line to shoot two. Yeah, great jab step, as you said, a great hesitation, Nathan. Dylan Smith, he knows what to do with the basketball, attack the rim, finds himself at the free throw line, where uh, last year he was a 64% free throw shooter for the Bearcats. 
second team NWC selection. Henline, a first team all conference player. Free throw goes down. And we are down to a one point game, 23 22. Dylan Smith with six points here in the quarter. And we have another foul. As you see Bowers now working. And there's some good fights going on down low, but both teams picking up quite a few whistles trying to get that position on the inside. Yeah, Carter Orr was fronting, working hard to front Bowers right there. Bowers put his elbow in the back of Carter Orr and picked up the personal foul. I like both sides of that. And, you know, being a post, post coach, I like posting hard. You know you don't want to foul, but you want to post hard. And I like the defense being played by Spencerville running the post because when Spencerville's gotten it down there, good things have happened. Set off a little bit too far under the basket that time. Can't get it to go. Link comes up with the rebound. Delzai looking to get rid of it. Ends up finding Link. Now Burton moves it down into the corner. Delzai. Excellent, excellent ball movement by St. Henry. Harding's three-point shot a little bit short. Dylan Smith tries to push the pace. He had Sadoff running with him. Smith put it up. Sadoff was there to clean it for the putback. Yeah, and I'm not so sure Dylan Smith knew. I don't know if I can make this, but if I get it up there, my teammate's going to get the offensive board. We can't give him an assist, but it was close to it. Now Spencer go back on top. As they have been trailing for quite a while here in the first half. Nice run. Puts them on top one as we have another whistle. I believe that's going to go on Carter Sutoff. Carter Sutoff now picks up his second foul of the night. And that is the seventh team foul. So Hardings is going to go to the free throw line to shoot one and one. This will be an area that Hardings wants to improve his game on. It's free throw shooting last year is right at 51%. Harding's first shot is up and good. St. Henry, they scrimmaged Elida, Bluffton, LCC, Crespi, Jackson Center, Arcana. They got a good look at some dual and three-way scrimmages. Spencerville scrimmage, Wayne Trace, Continental, Wapak, Shawnee, and Van Buren. So both these teams get some varied looks from the teams they've scrimmaged to prepare them for tonight's contest. John Harding makes both of his free throws to put St. Henry back on top one. Smith swings it over to Sensible, back out to Smith. Now here's Henline, had a quiet first half, kicks it over to Osting in the corner. Evan Osting with the three-point shot, his second three-pointer of the night. And Coach Rosenbeck's going to want to look at that at halftime. There have been a lot of possessions where Spencerville's passed the wing, from the wing to the corner, and the corner man has been wide open. Got to look at their defensive slides. Harding's able to keep that one alive, kicks it back out to Link. Link tries to go baseline, decides to pull it back out. Shot goes up, no good by Bergman. And we're going to have a, another whistle, this time on the rebound. See how this one goes on. It looks like it's going to go against Henline, it looks like, as that is his first. And that possession right there, St. Henry had some quick shots, maybe not really balanced and in rhythm, but man, they're hitting the offensive glass, so. Put it up there, see what you get. And as a result, they find themselves at the free throw line with Hardings again, where I believe he's three for three now. Hardings is perfect from the line as he lines up his second shot. This one is up. This one is no good. Three for four in the quarter. As Spencerville maintains a one-point lead. Henline tries to drive, kicks it into the corner, sensible. Thought about a three-point shot, and is up putting it on the floor, gets rid of it. It back in the hands of Headline. He shoots the three-pointer. This one's off. Link able to track down the long rebound. Now Bergman going to work. It's past the free throw line. Let's the floater go. No good. Rebound down to Osteen. Sensible. Works against Link. Goes across the paint, but the whistle comes before he hit the shot. As Owen Sensible is going to pick up his second foul. That is Spencerville's ninth team foul here of the half. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse yep. me, wrong yep. side, wrong side. No problem. Owen Sensible going to go to the free throw line now. He's got six points thus far for the Bearcats. Just a very entertaining first half. 
Sends the ball, shooting the one-on-one. -on -one. Can't get that one to go, but Evan Osing does a nice job around the rim to put that one back in for two. Spencerville hasn't had many offensive rebounds this half, but that was a big one, and Osteen gets the bucket. 29-26, Spencerville on top, under a minute left to play here in the first half. Spencerville, or St. Henry, a concerted effort to get it down to the block. Looking to go inside out, nice move. Great spin move by Nicholas Berkey as he's able to finish for two. Nicholas that looked like a possession where Berkey didn't want to shoot it, but didn't get any double or anything like that. Said, okay, I'm going to take it to the rim, and he scored. Nice bucket. Caden Bergman loses his footing that time, ends up all over Evan Osting, so he's going to pick up the foul. That's going to be Bergman's first. St. Henry again, concerted effort to get the ball down to the block. They move the ball effectively around the perimeter. It's not slow paced or anything and when they find the ball down there on the block that's typically one-on-one they do a nice job of attacking the rim and scoring the promised land down there right around the rim Osteen able to get his first free throw to go in he was a 78 percent free throw shooter last year second free throw is short Harden comes up with the rebound 30 seconds left to go here in the half i don't think they're going to hold it Guarded closely by Osteen, gets rid of it. All the way in, off the glass. Hayden Beckman comes up with the big two points. Solid penetration, finishing at the rim. Sense of ball wide open for three, gets that one to go. Again, that 2-2-1 two -two is vulnerable on the wings, down by the corner. Sense of ball hits his third three of the game. And we're going to have a foul with less than a second to go. We'll see who they call this on. And it's going to go against Owen Sensible. The freshman picks up his third foul. You mentioned freshman getting his first varsity action. You know, some of those things are some of the things you kind of live with when you're talking about a freshman. You know, he's had some big shots. He's had three three-pointers here in the first half. But a foul with less than a second left to go is going to send Beckman to the free throw line. And he is not able to make the front end of his one and one, and that's going to bring the first half to a close. A fast paced, great action game here in the first half. Going into the locker room, Spencerville's on top, 33 30. We'll step aside and be back with the second half right here on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight is provided by Charles River and Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. I'd also like to thank our presenting sponsor, Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Welcome back. Second half just about underway. Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen and Dave. I mean, I don't know if we could ask for anything more that first half. Fast-paced action, lots of scoring, everything good. I know you have a couple of thoughts on that first half. Yeah, Nate, you know, I said I'm your wingman on this game, and we're flying up and down the floor. Both teams, a lot of fun. And I got to thank Paul Hammergarn, the uh, director of basketball operations for St. Henry. He's been doing it for 24 years. He's got some stats for us. Turnovers, both coaches have to be pleased. Um, St. Henry has seven, Spencerville has six. Spencerville only had one in the second quarter. St. Henry is really being effective on the offensive glass. They've got six offensive boards. Spencerville from behind the arc, six for eight. Six for eight, 75% first game, got to be pleased with that. Josh Henline, leading scorer for Spencerville, only has one point thus far. Let's see what he does here in the second half. First possession of the second half will be controlled by St. Henry. Here's Bowers. Bowers got off to a great start as he was able to score nine points in that first quarter, but sat most of the second quarter out with 2,000. I mean, if you're looking at kind of the story of what that first half was and what may come back to get both of these teams, both teams have uh, quite a few fouls on either side as Cooks was able to run, get that one in the paint, but had that one knocked out by Bowers, so Henley's going to reset up top. When you look at Spencerville, they have three players with two fouls, one with three. 
as Evan Osting is able to score his 11th point of the night. Evan Osting doing a lot of heavy lifting here tonight. Sure is. Nice teardrop down there on the left baseline. That left baseline down at that end of the floor has been good for both squads thus far. He lines up the corner three. Big answer by Logan Lake. Now Logan Lake, a player that Coach Rosenbeck is looking to be a player that grows a lot for this team this year. Has a good start thus far in this game. Josh Henline not able to connect that time. Rebound comes down to St. Henry. Link running the point for St. Henry. Appeared in all of three varsity games last year. We're trying to find Hardings down low, but he was double teamed. Cooks and Sunoff doing a great job down there. That ball gets knocked out of bounds off of Hardings leg, so it's going to go back to the Bearcats. St. Henry putting a little bit of pressure, not making it easy for Spencerville. Dylan Smith able to dribble up the floor, pretty much unabated that time. Dropped it down to Carter Sunoff. He can't get it to fall, but he picks up the contact, and he's going to go to the free throw line. And that is going to be Evan Bowers' third foul of the night. It'll be the first team foul of the second half for St. Henry, as you see Carter Sunoff make his first free throw. Dylan Smith, yeah, he was able to penetrate way too deep uh, for St. Henry's defense. Smith led Spencerville last year with 69 assists. He's made some real nice passes thus far in this game already. Carter Smith's second free throw is no good. He has five points on the night, and Spencerville is on top three. Dylan Smith with the tight defense that time is going to get called for the reach. Not a foul you want to see, but Coach Sensible's clapping and telling Dylan, you know, keep playing hard. It's only his first foul, so that's okay, but you don't want that reach foul out top where everybody can see it, especially the guys in the stripes. So De Devin Delzeith is going to pull the trigger out of bounds for St. Henry. Gets rid of it into the backcourt to Logan Link. Link working against Smith, pulls it back out. Delzai changes course against Osing, but has to get rid of it. Down into the corner for Bikey. Bikey looking to go baseline. Long pass. Nice save that time, but Dylan Smith has it wrapped up into his feet. Able to hold on to it. Sutt off. Extra pass to Henline. Henline with the right hand off the glass. Nice job of transition offense for Spencerville. The ball never hit the ground. No dribble with Henline getting his first bucket of the game. Here's Bikey working against Cooks. Bikey. Spins back around. Gets this one high up. Extra soft little bounce. That one goes down. Yeah, gets the roll right there. Typically, you'd want to kiss that off the glass, going so strong to the basket. The bikey does a nice job. Finding two points there from the right block. Bikey. That's who Coach Rosenbeck's looking for leadership on this squad, and thus far he's done a great job of that in this game, both by his play defensively and with his scoring. Will Smith cut off down in the corner. It's back out. Here's Henline. Finds nice. Sutoff wide open down low. Carter Sutoff with the finish for two. Spencerville is able to get that zone to extend, and, and St. Henry's got to extend because Spencerville shooting the basketball so well behind the arc. Nice pass from Henline, giving the assist. Three point shot on the way. Sutoff not able to connect. Well, as you see, number 22, Nicholas Burke, he was able to save that one from going out of bounds, but it was a little off balance, had to get rid of it quickly. And when he did, it wasn't able to get a very good pass on it. Ends up out of bounds. So it's going to go back to Spencerville. The tempo of the game has stayed right where it has the whole first half. Both teams pushing the basketball, finding shots early in possessions. Smith dribbling through some traffic, drops off the headline. Headline looked like he was thinking about passing at that time. Comes down with it, pulls up himself for two. Josh Headline starting to feel it. Yeah, exactly. As we said, he had one point in the first half. He's got two buckets, and Coach Rosenbeck's going to call a timeout. So St. Henry wants to talk about it. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's presenting sponsors, Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. 
Tonight's scoreboard provided by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. St. Henry coming out of the timeout. That is the last thing that you want to see as Evan Osting does a great job of jumping that pass, getting to the basket, and picking up the foul. Yeah, great defensive presence there by Osting to tip it away and get the uh, drive to the basket and draw the foul. Coach Rosen Rosenbeck with that timeout. St. Henry outscored Spencerville 16 to 11, but since then, the second quarter went to Spencerville 22-14, and he calls that timeout here in the third quarter, being outscored nine to five, make that 10 to five now. Uh, I think Coach Rosenbeck right now is sensing the lack of experience that his team has. Got to give them a little confidence boost there in the timeout. But unfortunately, the turnover put Spencerville right back in position to score with Osting shooting the second of two free throws. Osting able to connect on both free throws. You see Evan Bowers check back into the game. And now so does Owen Sensible. Spencerville has extended this lead out to nine. They are on top, 44-35. Very crucial for St. Henry to be patient here offensively, work the ball. They've been going inside. I like the high-low look there, but another turnover. Bowers trying to force that one down low. And St. Henry does not get back as Carter Orr did not come back down quick. And, or excuse me. Uh, Luke Bikey did not come down quick enough, and Carter Sutoff is able to get the easy two points. Yeah, Evan Osting found him from three-quarter court down under the basket, and now we have another foul on St. Henry. A quick look and a turnover on the foul. We're going to go back to the Bearcats. So Carter Sutoff picks up his third, the team's third. Here's Osting, long pass into the corner. Henline ends up with it. He's going to drive, and this one's going to be no good as it gets stuck between the rim and the backboard. So it'll go to St. Henry. No, I think it'll stay with Spencerville with the alternating possession. You are right. Arrow possession does favor Spencerville, so a fortunate break for Spencerville. Yeah, Henline might get ridden by his, or his teammates in practice on Monday. Henline, as he tried to change direction that time, his back foot slipped out on him a little bit. Ends up going out of bounds, so possession is going to go back to the Redskins. You don't see a ball on a layup get stuck very often, and Henline being the veteran that he, that he is, he'll probably dish it right back to his teammates if that doesn't hurt him in a good way. So only five points this quarter for St. Henry. They got to find a way to have some productive offensive possessions here. Link lines up the three-point shot. This one's going to be no good. Rebound comes down to Spencerville. Going to push it ahead to Henline. Henline up to Sensible. Sensible working against Link. Back out to Henline. Extra pass one more time. Sen or Sensible does a great job of reversing the basketball that time. Osing wide open three-pointer. Couldn't get it to fall, though. Yeah, did everything right. Ball doesn't go in every time. But that's one where, again, Spencerville executed very well. Just came up empty. Bikey for three. That one rattles in. And that's a big three-pointer for St. Henry. It sure is. Great medicine. And Coach Rosenbeck's going to take a 30-second timeout here real quick. So St. Henry wants to talk about it. It looks like they're actually going to move to a full. So we will step aside as well. Spencerville on top, 46-38. We'll be right back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is provided by Charles River and Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. So Coach Rosenbeck takes that time out after the bucket. Let's see if he's going to change his defensive philosophy at all. Try and disrupt Spencerville's rhythm right now because Spencerville definitely is finding rhythm offensively at this point in the ballgame. 3.13 left to go here in the third quarter. And Spencerville is on top, 46-38. He's going to go from the 2-2-1 to a 1-2-1-1, three-quarter court press. Spencerville able to break it, gets all the way in. And I'm going to say out of bounds, down low. As Carter Orr that time just, I think, lost a little bit of uh, wherewithal as far as where he was on the court trying to get that rebound. 
Landed out of bounds. So St. Henry gets a possession back. But then Link. Link lost the basketball. The officials are going to blow the whistle for a foul, and that is going to be foul number four on Owen Sensible. So it's going to be sideline out of bounds for St. Henry. Sensible is going to stay in the game. The scoreboard says he only has three. Let's see if we can get that cleared up. Nice entry pass. Evan Bowers strong. Hasn't scored since the first quarter. Finally able to get it back up. He's going to go to the free throw line for the and one. And, you know, just to play it safe, everything that I have in this scorebook is very, very, very preliminary. <laughs> well, you're so, doing so many so things at once, Nate. There's, an, there's a chance that I unfortunately gave Owen Sensible a foul. It was not on him. I can keep my eyes on the game a little bit more than you, but a great entry pass there by Harding's to Bowers. Bowers posted so well down there on the block. He gets the in one, finishes at the free throw line, cuts the lead to five. So back to back offensive possessions for St. Henry. Come away with three points. They've been able to cut into this Bearcat lead. It's back down to five. Three pointer in the corner by Sensible though. Oh and Sensible, Redskin killer right now. That's his fourth three of the game. The freshman not, not phased at all by this varsity action. St. Henry comes right back with Evan Bowers' power and strength on the block. Evan Bowers had a quiet second quarter and a pretty quiet first part of this third quarter. But here in back-to-back -back possessions has come up big for St. Henry. He's been able to get down low, pick up contact, and now he has an opportunity for another three-point play. Bowers, Bikey, and Harding's the most appreciable varsity experience for St. Henry, and they have gone to those three here. That's sensible, first miss of the game, St. Henry basketball. Under two left to play here in the game. A little bit of a push off that time by Harding's. A little bit too noticeable as the official was right there. He's going to pick up the call. Bruce Etzler picks that one up and definitely a push off and that foul is on Hardings his first of the game in a game that has been very physical and he's a physical player nice job not picking up fouls so Dylan Smith able to get all the way down on that right side got the shot up but couldn't get it to fall rebound comes down to St. Henry Link pushes it up to Harding and gets it over to Bikey. Bikey working against Smith, gets it back over as St. Henry now does a nice job moving the ball around the perimeter. Harding, long pass cross court, just out of the reach of Logan Link and go out of bounds and back to the Bearcats. Right idea, swing the ball across the face of the basket, just too high. St. Henry unable to come down with it in the turnover as a result. You know, Coach Rosenbeck said this might be the most talented Spencerville team he has coached against in his 15 years that the Bearcats and the Redskins have mixed it up. That's saying a lot. See Harding's able to jump into that passing lane, knock that one away. Link lines up the three-pointer. That one's no good. Fight down low. Berkey not able to come up with it. But Osten touches it last as he tried to save it, so possession is going to stay with St. Henry. Another offensive rebound for St. Henry. Great inside-out look. Link with the good look. Had good rotation on the basketball. Notice a couple of his shots having some sideways spin. That one was perfect. Just doesn't go down for the young man. Ball comes into Harding, who's going to feed down low, but we're going to have a whistle prior to the shot. A lot of reaching around inside. Contribute that to St. Henry posting hard down there and then um, making Spencerville come around, sort of like a pass interference call in football, reaching around, having a hand on the back, and uh, St. Henry able to draw fouls in that manner. Here's Bikey working against Smith. Bikey pulls up. That one's off the front of the rim. Smith on the run out. Had it taken nice away. Defense. Great play by Bergman. Here's Bikey. He decides to dribble, and he's fouled Dylan Smith that time. A little bit of a lapse of judgment by the seniors. He just kind of grabbed the arm and turned Bikey, and that is going to be Dylan Smith's third foul. Yeah, he had zero at halftime. He's picked up three personal fouls here in the third quarter, has Dylan Smith. And Coach Sensible is going to have a little talk with him, having regroup here the rest of the quarter. 
Under a minute left to go, six point game. Spencerville on top, 29-43. St. Henry down by three to start this quarter. Found themselves down double digits, but have fought their way back. And we're gonna have another whistle. I believe this one's gonna go on the headline. Luke Beike coming across the paint, looking to post up on the on the uh, right block. And yeah, Hemline shoved him off of that block while the ball was in the air. An easy call for the officials. So that is the second foul on Josh Henline, but the bigger news with that foul is we still have 40 seconds left to go here in the third quarter, and St. Henry's going to be shooting free throws on every foul from here on out. See Beike not able to connect on the front end of that one and one Osteen going to bring it up, kicks it out. Nice drive up off the glass, no good. And we're going to have contact underneath. This one's going to be against St. Henry. As they're going to have number four, Caden Bergman. As Bergman is going to pick up his second foul of the night. Bearcats have been able to establish position for an offensive rebound. And you're right, Caden Bergman pushed the Spencerville player in the back, picks up the personal. 30 seconds left to go. Spencerville on the inbound. Henline gets it out to Sensible. Now here's Orr. Again, not a game where I think they're going to hold the ball. And Sensible shoots it. Hardings comes up with the rebound, but he loses the basketball. Ends up in the hands of Sutoff. Sutoff hands it off to Sensible. Sensible down to Orr. Good defense by the Redskins, but a little bit too much contact by Berkey on that one. Nicholas Berkey is going to get whistled for his first foul of the night. One of the, seems like at this point one of the few guys who've been on the floor who haven't had a foul. Correct. And Carter Orr right there will be a great teaching point with Coach Sensiball when they look at the film. He should have just went up strong right away with that basketball and drawn the foul on the shot. He does get fouled, but not initially. Uh, so, again, finds himself at the free throw line. Right Carter Orr not able to connect on his first free throw. Free throw is good. Seven point game, 50 to 43. 13 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. Spencerville trying to get their defense set. So Harding's going to inbound to Link. Link's just going to run out of the out of bounds, working against Sensible. Drops it off to Berkey. Berkey working against Cooks. He's going to just move. Tried to get the hook shot, but too many steps down low. That's going to be a turnover. It's going to go back to Spencerville. We're going to have a timeout by Spencerville as they're going to want to talk about it. Two seconds left to go, and he wants to maximize it. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our presenting sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Two seconds left to go. Spencerville come out of the timeout. Let's see if they get what they drew up. Long pass gets picked off by Bikey. Bikey, long shot down, no good, and that's going to bring the third quarter to a close. So after three, Spencerville on top, 50 to 43. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is provided by Charles River and Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Fourth quarter just about underway here at Spencerville High School. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen. Dave, that time, that third quarter, it just seemed like Spencerville's offense couldn't miss. Correct. They, they extended the lead by four. They couldn't miss. They shot the ball well. And then in that, that quarter, St. Henry had 10 turnovers. They have 17 on the game. Spencerville had five. They are at 11 in total turnovers. Here's Evan Bowers for three. That one's good. Evan Bowers, he has been huge for his team all night. 17 points on the game. And we are back to just a four-point lead. Nice step back three. Henline's going to try and return the favor. And he does. Josh Henline, we mentioned just one point in the first half, but he's coming up big here in the second half for the Bearcats. And is now his seventh point. Hardings, nice strong move on the inside. Can't get it to go, though. We're going to have a tie up underneath as Sutoff was strong with the basketball. And the possession arrow is going to favor Spencerville. And again, uh, 
and Spencerville now 8 for 13 behind the arc with Henline hitting that three. And a lot of them have come off of the pressure. They fought pressure with pressure. They've taken that open look, which is what a veteran team can do. And they've had, basically, they've, they've had some horse shots behind the arc. The defense has not recovered because they've been extended. And Henline and Sensible, for sure, have taken advantage of the opportunity and hit some three-pointers. And as we said, they're 8 for 13 from the floor at this point in time. So they did not call jump ball on that. It was actually a foul. As Carter Sudoff went down to shoot his one and one Evan Bowers, three-point shot is off. So now this entire fourth quarter, both teams are going to be going to the free throw line for any foul. Dylan Smith spins into the lane, gets that one off. Bikey able to get a hand on it. We're going to have a foul underneath as Bikey and Carter Sudoff get tied up. Dylan Smith with that patented spin move. I've watched him do that over the years here at Spencerville. Gets in there, but St. Henry able to block it away, and a foul occurs. We're going to walk to the other end. Both teams now got to be careful. We got quite a few guys racking up three fouls as we come winding down here in this fourth quarter as this game's getting closer and closer. But some of these guys you can't afford to have to have send them to the bench. And then conversely, you got to make your free throws when you get the opportunity. That's going to play a big role down the stretch as well. See, Bikey not able to connect, and Sutoff dribbles that one off his foot. Great penetration by Henline. Sutoff unable to finish. Delzeit has this one put back as Blake Summers went up high for the rejection. We're going to have Beckman come back into the game, as it does. Let's see. So as they can see the number. Number three, Curtis Puttoff checked back into the game. Here's Evan Bowers behind the arc. Spencer or St. Henry in their half court offense. Good penetration. Here's Bikey for three. And that one's good. Big shot by Bikey. Blake Summers with a hand up defensively. But Bikey able to hit the three. They get the turnover off the pressure. Beckman to Bowers and Evan Bowers. Second three pointer of the game. The third three pointer for the Redskins. And now it's just a one point game. St. Henry says, yeah, we may be giving some threes up in transition, but we're just going to have that point in the game where we're going to get turnovers, and we're going to take advantage of that. They do right there. Cuts it to one here with 5.46 to go in the fourth. Hayden Beckman's going to pick up the foul. As we see Dylan Smith go to the free throw line. Dylan Smith, the second leading scorer for the Bearcats last year, comes up short on that one. Good hustle by Carter Orr to try to save that one, but he was out of bounds, so the ball's going to go back to the Redskins. Evan Bowers leads all scorers with 20 points. Only two points behind him is uh, Luke Berkey, or excuse me, Bikey. He has been consistent for the Redskins all night long. 5.38 left to go. Bowers working against Orr, gets rid of it. Get good reversals for St. Henry, going to look to go inside. Here's Bowers, turnaround jumper. Tough nice shot. Nice soft touch Woo. by Evan Bowers. What a pretty shot from the baseline with his back to the basket. And just like that, after trailing for most of this, uh, actually all of this second half, St. Henry is on top one. Sensible for three. That is his fifth three-pointer of the game. The freshman coming up big. Owen Sensible making a mark right away for Spencerville. And now it's the seniors turn. Picks the pocket, Adele Zeit goes all the way in for two. Josh Henline, like you said, freshman to senior. Stepping up, Henline gets another hand on it, but St. Henry recovers. Here's Bikey for three, that one's no good. At this point for both of these teams, when they shoot, you're just expecting it to go down the way these offenses are flowing. Yep. Henline with the hesitation move up and under for two. So St. Henry takes a quick lead, but Spencerville responds with a 6-0 or 7-0 run to regain the lead by six. 60 to 54, 420 left to go. We're gonna have a whistle, no shot. And the foul's gonna be on number 24, Carter Orr. That is his second. 
Now, there were last year, there was a lot of talk about two eighth graders in the area, one being Owen Sensiball, coach's son, and the other one being the Elmer boy, coach Aaron Elmer's son at St. John's as a freshman, both making big marks. Coach Sensiball, he shared with me, didn't know that uh, Owen would even make the varsity roster this year. Uh, I think he's answered any questions as far as that's concerned, Nate. Big night for Owen Sensiball. 15 points all coming from behind the arc. And at this rate, I would got to think if we can see four years of shooting like this, we're going to be talking about him as one of the most prolific three-point shooters that's ever come out of this area. Absolutely. St. Henry State with the 2-2-1 press now. Sends the ball open, doesn't, doesn't let it rip that time. Here's Henline, gets it up to Osting. St. Henry playing good defense. Henline step back three-pointer. In and out, and then back in for Josh Henline as he now has 10 points just in the quarter. Excuse me, eight points. He's gone for eight points here in the quarter. Long three-point shot, and that's how you enter, or answer Curtis Putoff with his fifth point of the night, first basket that he has made since the first quarter. St. Henry cuts it to four, and Coach Rosenbach's gonna take a full timeout after the made shot. We're gonna step aside, and we'll be back right here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's presenting sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Tonight's scoreboard is provided by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. 63, 59, 335 left to go here in the game. And you know, Dave, we were talking during the break. If this is how the season starts and this is how it's going to look for the rest of this year, sign me up for every exactly. game of the year. Exactly, yeah, a lot of fun. Both teams getting after it at both ends. Great offense, great ball movement. We see it right here again. We've got a foul on number five, Evan Bowers, reaching over the top. Again, the ball movement creates so many of these fouls for both defenses because the ball's snapping around and it eventually puts the defense out of position just enough that the foul is called when contact occurs. It all started with great court vision by Josh Henline to find Carter Sutoff down low. Evan Bowers reached in, picked up his fourth foul, but Sutoff not able to make the free throw. Link to Bowers, he's gonna stay in the game with his four fouls. St. Henry running their pattern offense here a little bit. They're gonna look to go inside, either off the dribble or the pass. A little short arm that time by Bergman. Went off the front of the rim, but in the scramble, another whistle and another foul. This time it's gonna be on number 24, Carter Orr. That is his third of the night. And what I love about this game between these two programs is two quality programs. You're going to find out a lot about yourselves coming out of this, which will only make you better. But, you know, neither one is intimidated by the other. Uh, St. Henry, they've got 13 MAC championships. They lead the MAC in league championships. Spencerville has eight, third in the Northwest Conference. Just two quality programs with a lot of tradition. Bergman not able to connect on either one of his free throws. Now with 10 team fouls, St. Henry is going to be going to the free throw line to shoot two the rest of the way. Osting for three, that's a big shot. Evan Osting, his first points of the quarter come in an opportune time. Evan Osting, big time and behind the arc, again created by penetration. St. Henry had to sag down, gave the wide open look. Evan Bowers pulls up from the free throw line. Henline loses his balance though, and they're gonna give the ball right back to St. Henry. Yeah, tough, tough travel call there on Josh. He did travel, just got a little bit out of control there. But that's another thing for the first game of the season. We're not seeing football plays at all. It's really finesse. Nice job there as Luke Bikey gets another bucket on the lob on the inbounds. So a great inbounds play by St. Henry. Pulls them within five, 66, 61, 215 left to go in the game. Link pokes this one away to Osting. And 
and we're going to have a foul. This one's going to be on Evan Osting. As you saw, Caden Bergman trying to get it up to Link. I think it's going the other way, Nate. I think it's going to be on Link. I think you're right. It looked like the official was pointing at, at Osting, who was on the floor. But as he came up, it was actually Link. So it's going to go back the other way, and Osting is going to end up taking the free throws. And this, that's the 10th team foul by St. Henry. So Evan Osting is going to be shooting two. A tough call either way. It's one of those, again, the ball's up in the air. Both guys are going after it. The officials make a call the best of their ability with what they see from the angle that they're presented with. Spencerville comes out with the break, but Osting is un unable to score on that first one. Or the second. Great hustle that time by Carter Orr, who loses it as he's falling out of bounds. So the basketball is going to go back to St. Henry with 2.06 left to go, and they are trailing by five. So with that foul, if you're a St. Henry fan, with him missing both free throws, it's the old, the ball, the ball don't lie right there, Nate. They didn't come away with anything off of the foul call. Bikey gets it back into the, on the wing. Here's Evan Bowers, feeds Bikey down low. Bikey with the shot. This one's no good. Loose ball scramble ends up into the hands of Henline. He's going to look to push. Goes behind the back. Going to slow things down a little bit now. Clock is on Spencerville's side. Don't need to be in a rush. A minute 38 left to go in the game. Henline kicks it back up top to Osting. Coach Rosenbeck's telling his players to come out and guard man to man here. Here's Sudoff down low, turnaround jumper no good. Evan Bowers comes up with the rebound. Probably not the shot that Coach Sensible would like to have had taken right there. A lot of pressure defensively, wasn't open. Mikey for three, that one's going to be short. Headline with the rebound. Spencerville going to continue to push the pace. Here's Carter Orr. That one's no good. Bowers with another rebound. Evan Bowers having one heck of a night. Ten points in the quarter. Again, St. Henry's going to want to pick things up here, get a shot a little earlier in the possession. Link takes it. Long shot by Logan Link. A little bit of a four shot as they know they needed points. And now here's Henline. Down to Sensiball. Sensiball with the head fake. Kicks it back out. Down in distance if you're Spencerville. Down in distance. You don't need to force the action right there. Owen Sensiball, the coach's son, makes a great decision. Kicks it back out to Henline. They reverse it and they get the foul. Chance to... Uh, Start driving some nails, if you will, if they can make these free throws with Carter Orr at the foul line. So Logan Link picks up his third foul, 42 seconds left to go. As Carter Orr takes his second trip to the free throw line, one point on the night. He's not able to connect on the first. Again, just needs to slow down a little bit. Everything seemed very, very fast there on his on his delivery for that free throw. See if he can make the adjustment on the second one here, Nate. Or second free throw is good. Much better. Coach Sensiball's gonna take a timeout. So Spencerville wants to take the timeout. It's gonna be a full one. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is provided by Charles River and Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. That timeout by Spencerville, Nate, situation where I'm sure Coach Sensible is talking about let's have another great defensive possession. And when we secure the basketball, either off a miss or on the inbound, let's work on ball security here. We've got to take care of it. They're going to need to foul us. Logan Link trying to get it up, working through some traffic. Gets it into the front court. Link's going to go all the way to the basket, off the button. And he is able to get this one to go. Four-point game, 32 seconds left to go. Logan Link goes coast to coast from Boston to L.A., takes the contact and finishes through it to cut the lead to four. Great quick basket if you're a St. Henry Redskins fan by Logan Link right there. Ball's going to be out of bounds for Spencerville. Be interesting here if Coach Rosenbeck stays with his 2-2-1 two, two, or if he goes full man denial. I would think at this point in time, you got to think about full man denial. With only 32 seconds left to go, you can't spend a lot of time letting Spencer will move the ball around. You're going to have to decide how quickly you want to foul. 
You want to go for that trap right away, try to see if you can't get a quick turnover. If not, you're going to have to foul. Unfortunately, all these fouls, this is the time that it really comes back to haunt you as no matter what you do, Spencerville's going to be going to the free throw line to shoot too. Yeah, and you're going to look to keep the ball out of Dylan Smith's hands and out of Josh Henline's hands and then foul anybody else if you have that uh, opportunity to do so. And they foul Smith before the clock even starts. So they're not even going to worry about the turnover. They'd rather have the time. And they're going to take a trip down to shoot two. Spencerville is trying to hold on to this four-point lead. And I don't think they wanted to foul Smith right there. He just cut really hard, forced the St. Henry player to grab him a little bit, and the officials did a great job of calling the off-the-ball foul. Dylan Smith with 10 points on the night. He went 1-4-2 his last trip to the free throw line. And he is not able to connect on this first free throw. Second one is coming. Second shot is up and good. Pushes the lead to five with 32 seconds. Here come the Redskins. Still just a two possession game. Plenty of time for St. Henry. Looking for a quality shot. Bikey going to work into the lane. Going to drive. Shot goes up. Sutoff comes up with the big rejection. Ends up into the hands of Josh Henline as he is fouled and going to go to the free throw line. Yeah, Carter set off with a great block there and it occurred the way most blocks do. It wasn't his man. He wasn't guarding the St. Henry player. He came over and helped position and knocked that away. Big play defensively for the Bearcats. Henline gets the deflection, gets fouled. Josh, a 79% free throw shooter last year. See how he does here with the double bonus. First free throw rattles around and drops. He is now two of three from the line for the night. Second shot is up. And he misses. So still just a two possession game at six points. 14 seconds left to go. Bikey going to have to shoot. Gets this one rejected by Osting. But Evan Osting with a little bit of a mental error that time got part of the hand as Luke Bikey is going to go to the free throw line to shoot three. And he gets to shoot three with the clock stopped. He can cut this lead to three as well. Yeah, a mental error, cardinal sin, whatever you want to call it. The last thing Coach Sensible wanted to see was Evan Osten, Osten foul a St. Henry shooter, in this case Luke Bikey, who was behind the arc at the time. To make it even, I don't know if you want to say worse, but that was Evan Osten's first foul of the night. And that's, that's saying something in this game. He is the only player from Spencerville who up to that point had not had a foul if they had been on the floor tonight. And he picked it up with 10 seconds left to go as Bikey makes all three. 69, 66, 10 Cole seconds Cortina left to go. On the ball. That one is able to get a hand on it, but they're going to say that Bergman reached in. He's going to pick up his fourth foul. That's going to put Evan Osting at the free throw line so he can make amends here a little bit with 10.2 if he can nail these free throws. He was a 78% free throw shooter last year in limited varsity action. He's made three trips to the free throw line tonight. He is three of six on the evening. Needs to make at least one of these to make it a two possession game. Osting's first free throw is good. Takes a lot of pressure off of this next one. Can I take that back? Evan played quite a bit of varsity last year. Second one, no good. Sutoff comes up with a big rebound. Henline, he's going to hold on to it. We'll see what St. Henry wants to do. They finally reach in for the foul with 4.7 seconds left to go. Spencerville with the four-point lead and Henline going to the free throw line. Great tip out there by the Bearcats. And the ball goes right into Henline's hands. And as the senior should, he held on to it and said, you're going to put me to the free throw line, boys, because I'm going to put nails in the coffin, as he does right there with 4.7 left to play. That pushes the lead to five. That is now his 12th point of the quarter. Josh Henline. Makes both of his free throws. Back out to a six-point game. Link going to travel, pull up. Not able to get this one in, and that is going to bring this game to a close. This game had a little bit of everything, Davis. You know, I think, you know, a lot is expected of the Spencerville team this year. 
maybe not so much from St. Henry. Not quite sure what people, uh, people weren't quite sure what you're going to get out of them. You know, you mentioned it uh, prior to the game. You know, they had a lot of graduating seniors from that St. Henry club. Not sure how they were going to look. But I'll tell you what, they came out and gave Spencerville everything they could handle tonight. They absolutely did. Again, a lot of inexperience on this St. Henry ball club, but they were not faced by that at all. Battled hard throughout. Just a little bit more experience on the Spencerville Bearcat side of the ledger. And again, Josh Henline had a great second half where at halftime we had him down for one point. He ends up being the leading scorer for Spencerville. Puts 17 on the board in the second half to finish with 18 uh, for the Bearcats. A great win. A great first game of basketball by both squads. Did a lot of things right. And then they'll break down the film and look at areas of improvement. St. Henry gets right back in action tomorrow night playing Rushi. And Spencerville gets a week off. And then they are going to tangle with Elida. As you mentioned, a heck of a first game to open the season. 72-66 win by Spencerville. They had three players in double digits. And for St. Henry, they had two as Evan Bauer led all scorers with 24. His teammate, Luke Beike, right behind him with 23. <laughs> that is just going to about wrap it up for us here at Spencerville High School. I'd like to thank our crew working behind the scenes. Jacob Marshall, Zach back at the studio doing a great job as always. We appreciate everything that you guys do, making us look and sound so good. One final time for Spencerville High School. For Dave Bowen, I'm Nate Garlock. Spencerville knocks off St. Henry 72-66. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great night, everybody.